I want you to smack it with a hammer. It's an effort. In this video, I destroy a giant TCR frame. You get this. It's yeah. obvious. Then Rob from Carbon Bike Repair UK is going to professionally repair the damage. Same wall thickness, and we'll get it back to where it was before. Step one in all this madness is finding a suitable frame in Rob's carbon fiber bike graveyard that's a size 52, my size, and suitable for this project. <laughs> this is a small uh, giant. Medium L, medium large. Oh, is it? It might be a bit big. Let's check this one. Ta da! Medium. Medium. What's the, the issue? So this one's already redone? This has been redone, yeah. Ah, oh, the chain stays, okay. That's why I didn't see it. Yeah, so what they, <laughs> what, they, what they had to do, what they had to do here is, you can see this is a matte finish. Yeah. So the first, when you, when you spray, uh, because it's a salvage bike, um, somebody was training on this one, uh, it won't finish up as gloss. It was put a matte on top of the gloss. Ah, uh -huh, okay. I know what's wrong with this one. I think. <laughs> Uh, that's had a bad day, isn't it? Yeah, I think. Yes, what? It's his... How come it's in half? A uh, warranty. Okay. Yeah, what happens is with, with, with bike manufacturers when they, when they give you a bike back in warranty, they require some level of proof that the bike that you still have has been destroyed. Here's the other half. Can you tell me what happened there? Um, well, a lot. That's completely gone, isn't it? Yeah, that's a front. That's a front impact. Jeez. So basically, what happened is the forks, because they're ominously missing from the pile, they, they, it would have bent down like that and ruptured. It's what we call an implosion fracture. So it's basically just ripped into the material and pulled it out. All right, this is a interesting one. This is when someone says look they want their bikes custom resprayed uh and what is involved and we'll say well you know we'll give them a price and they'll say especially if they want naked carbon they want naked carbon right. Right? so you say well okay but this whole bike needs to be stripped off plus the paint work and so on it gets expensive so they say well would you mind if we strip the paint off and we send you the frame and we go no no problem but if there's any defects and things that we need to do before we paint your bike is you know, it's going to be an additional spend so some some folks uh, send us this okay. wow just uh, sanded through potted through yeah yeah carbon shouldn't be sanded by by folks who don't really understand how carbon works because it's not hard like you think it's hard it's super soft with sandpaper doesn't do abrasion. You can see that's uniweave, so basically carbon, the structural carbon that uh, it makes the, the bike, uh, the structure of the bike, and then the weave, which is traditional carbon look. And this is a plane weave, meaning that it's 90 degree plane, 1000 K uh, weave, so it's a fairly mm -hmm. tight finish. It's a certain look. Um, but you can see that underneath there is the basic construct, construct there, you can see that it's exposed there. And it's got quite a bit of kit on it. Oh. And that's a... Is that a propel? A giant propel? Yeah. It's like. That's got quite a bit of kit and on it. And it's got the brakes on? Well, some of it, yeah. It's, yeah. But it's got the forks more importantly. Yes. That one doesn't have the forks. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Does it? No, I don't. We need to go and have a look. Yeah. Okay, so we do have the forks of the giant, so that's a potential as well. Just going to another place to look for some more frames. Um, I think these are all 54s. That's, that's a That's a, that's a, a black. This is, the, this is one of their top ones, yeah. This is a 54. Oh, it's probably a bit big. Yeah. It's a few more to go. Oh. This. This one was damaged in several places. So this was, um, the client wanted this one restored. There was a chain stay. 
seat stay. Lovely car. Is that? It's costly. Yeah, so I think this was repaired. This is the repair. I remember this because we did this repair. So this has been repaired here, here. Cervelo R5, right? Yeah, this is a this is a really old bike. It's been around a while, but honestly, this was the game changer. This bike set the bar for so many different uh, climbing bikes that we see now with a very thin stays, just weight reduction, weight reduction, weight reduction. These bikes were very hard to beat up a climb. And a, a giant followed them very quickly. I think it was giant that followed them. Great bike. Nothing super exciting to ride, but you just know you can. The more you ride it, the better it gets. Anyway, I'm not selling us for some. Yeah. <laughs> but up we go. This is uh, your chance to decide how you want to break this bike. So we are going to go with the giant TCR Advanced SL, which is a super light version. And that is the lime and black one that you've seen in the video. Now it's a 2016 model. And at the time of release back in 2016, a complete bike with Ultegra was 3,332 pounds. So that gives you an indication of what this frame was like. Interestingly, this bike has actually already had three repairs completed. So let's see what they are. So it's, it's been compromised pretty seriously. Okay. It's had the drive side chainstay fracture. Okay, so that's why we've got gloss there. Yeah. We've got a non drive side seat stay fracture. So that would have been fractured there. And we've got a non drive side seat stay dropout area, which is there. Wow. So let's break it one more time. Yeah. Four fractures, right? Four, yeah, four. Four repairs. That's a big. That's a lot of. Yeah. Around the power, around the power area, you will certainly notice it if it's whippy. Why don't we assume that this is a a roof rack impact? Yeah. And we'll crush that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to smack it with a hammer. You can show the facts at home, who say that carbon doesn't do impacts well. Yeah. You want to grab that hammer over there. This one? Yeah. Oh, this is a sharp pointed hammer, right? Oh. Why don't you give it a... Where do you want me to hit? How, how hard do you want me to hit? As hard as you think... How hard right, do you think me... it's going to be to break? I think it? I'm going to have to put some oomph in. Okay, have a go. Right, let me just... Jeez. Harder? Keep going. Oh, that sounded a bit different, didn't it? More? It's an effort. All right. You've done a little bit of delamination there. Okay, here, here's a good example before we actually break through the material. This is what we call a soft impact. It can be from cars or another bicycle in a race or, or, or whatever. And one of the things that you can always look for on your bike to see if there's any form of delamination, two things, you want to, you want to feel with your thumb, right, along the surface, around that potential fracture. Now we're not sure whether we broke it, are we, Jordan? No. Okay, so, we are, so we're going to assume that it's not broken yet, but one of the things that we can look at for sure around a, a delamination is you see these concentric circles here. This is a good sign that what's happened is something has pressed in and broken the lacquer layer. That is lacquer, which is very, very uh, fragile, very brittle because it's been baked and it doesn't flex as much as the carbon does. So that's why I hope we never wrap bicycles because uh, a baked uh, surface really yeah. gives us an idea like an egg yeah. um, of what could have taken place or some trauma that's placed there. But what we want to try and do is make do some damage we want to be sure right <laughs> then we're going to grind that damaged material out and then we're going to repair it this frame should take 60 tons more one trauma give it a heart more
There, okay. Not going. Finally, finally broken through. So that's what we call a rather large fracture. Jeez. That can take some impact though. I thought it would be a few hit, you know, one yeah. big, big hit, but that can really take a... And this is a climbing bike. So this, this, shouldn't, this should be a lot more fragile than your standard sprint bike. Um, so yeah, really? don't be too worried about um, these things when, they, when you bump into somebody or let it fall over or, or you can see. I mean, that's quite a sharp edge hammer and what it would have done the damage was as it impacted you can see the curve there. Yeah, that would have been from the edge, but from a f from head on a flat surface. Yeah, very good, very 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 resilient. Yeah, see that. Yeah. Yeah, spongy it sounds. Yeah. Now it, I I'm, I always say don't ever do um, coin tests because coin tests will give you different sounds in different junctions. Okay. But in a long area like this, when it's so obvious, you don't even need to do a point test. But let me just show you what uh, um, uh, an impact does to the material when it loosens and breaks it like an onion skin. Is you get a nice, and then you get this, it's yeah. obvious. But I mean by that stage, you don't even need to do the coin test really. Yeah, so that's, that's, it, yeah. that's fairly definitive. Let's take this material out and we're going to put the material back in again. Same wall thickness and we'll get it back to where it was before. So now we've got to find where we want to grind. So I'm going to follow the paint lines. So basically what I'm going to do is, I can tell from experience, we delaminated all along here. So that's a fairly large area. All those who are wondering why we're not wearing masks is because we've got one of these a vacuum table so it draws any of the particles out so I can see here uh, now that I've removed the paint where I need to get to there's some damage along this edge we need to do we need to repair this whole area this is the main area and another thing that happens when you a painted bike there's some brands that rely on the paint to hold the, the structure of the bike together if you take the paint off the bike gets softer more flexible in really? the area, well, yeah, because it's. I mean, the paint is a, an epoxy. Okay. Yeah. It's like a gel coat. So you take that off uh, on a wall thickness that 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 thin, it will make a difference. And sometimes people get confused and think, oh, that's delaminated, but it's actually just it doesn't have like half a millimeter of, of strong epoxy paint on it. How does yeah? that feel then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, oh yeah, it's really gone there, isn't it? You can feel it there. Yeah. 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 What you were doing with a hammer was you were dislodging these layers of material from the matrix. So the matrix being the epoxy that binds those layers together and, and, and creates what we call a composite. So what you did was, because this is, they put less and less uh, resin in to modern bikes, um, they can delaminate a little easier, but still not, I mean, you tried with a hammer, so I don't want to alarm anybody, but can you see the way that just flakes off? Yeah. That's a layer. You can see the different cross plies. Can you see them there? Yeah. Okay, so these are all layers of carbon, whatever uh, type of carbon they want to put into these particular areas is up to the manufacturer. Nobody knows what that carbon is. They might put one layer of a Tureka, high modulus Tureka carbon, which they might call, uh, you know, T1000 or in Trex case, they, would, they name it differently. But nobody knows once you've compressed those materials how many layers necessarily that you've used. Because if you do uh, a uniweave layer, I'd say two on top of each other and then one across, you can always tell which one went across, but you don't know how many layers are in there. So if you're trying to replicate that, it's very, very difficult. Okay. We're trying to comment on that is even harder, especially if you're not the designer who created the, the actual bike yeah. itself. <laughs> yeah. So let's, 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 let's be clear about that. So what we're going to do is arrest this issue from occurring again. 
So although we won't replace the, 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 the material in this area that will be the same, this is so, such a small area that if there's any twist reliance across the whole frame, and you'll tell me on your ride whether there's any compromise in the, in the bike, and particularly with regard to being a bit more whippy. Whippy meaning that the bike is too compliant to your twists, right? Yeah. What we do is like a windshield fracture. We just stop the crack from getting any further and we block it down. We lock this area out. So when you get a bike that's had a repair that's repaired right across from there to there, you can be rest assured that that bike is not the same bike. It's just too much material replacement mm -hmm. that has removed the DNA of that bike in such, a, such an important area of the front, okay? So what we're doing is just stopping this from happening. So we don't repair everything, but down to a size like this is, is getting to a maximum size of repair that we want to do. It's pretty big, isn't it? Yeah. And we can afford to do that on a, on a surface that is that yeah, large. Absolutely. It's really not going to make any difference to the rest of the bike, provided the wall thickness is the same and it's compliant in the terms that, that basically the bike needs to be. If you, have, if you put more carbon in there, you're now stiffening that up so much so that you're alienating the repair from the rest of the twist of the frame. You mm. can't put more in or less. Okay. And that is obviously an important part. It's a bit of an art. Yeah, so the compression ratios that we apply to these repairs are critical. I can't show them to you because they're part of our IP in the company, but the compression ratios that are here are identical to this because when we when we profile the bike, the wall thickness is exactly the same. We need to go a little bit more and get rid of this this stuff here. There's another layer, cross pry. get into the base. There yeah, we're through now. So you see how dry some carbon is? Yeah. There's hardly any glue in there. And this is the this is the modern way of bikes. They used to impregnate the carbon in the older bikes a lot more. And what resins do particularly Resins never solidify completely. Uh, they are what makes the relationship between carbon, which is flexible, and a soft resin, is that it's able to deal with shape changing a lot more than what people think. In in cases with modern bikes, where we're trying to get wall thicknesses down, and we're trying to make the bike stiffer, we reduce the amount of flexible matrix that's inside the the composite. So we, they squeeze that out, so you end up with what is quite dry. As you can see, it's almost back to hair again. Mm. You know, I could... It it's a little bit like a paintbrush when you didn't wash the paintbrush off properly. Yeah. You know, you get a bit of stuff on it, but you can clearly see the fibers. Yeah? Okay, so currently Rob is doing some repairs and Respectfully, obviously not everything's going to be shown um, because it is unique to Carbon Bike Repair UK. But I really appreciate Rob even showing us what he's, he's shown so far and what's coming up in the video. So big thank you, Rob. I'm excited for this project as well. As we said, I'm going to build this bike up and I'm going to ride it. It's already had three repairs. This is now the fourth. It's going to be interesting. So I'm going to take a quick break, go back in and see where he's at. Many, many minutes later, we put the nappy on the repair. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what's happening is the, the matrix is going to start to leach out of the, of the repair. We do it in a certain way. So we're going to now put this into the curing bay. Give it the full beans. Why oh, is it heated? And it's infrared. Oh, okay. yeah. oh wow. More moments later. So you could go and ride it now. Like that. You could ride it like that. Can I feel it? Yeah. Well, it is warm, isn't it? Yeah. The infrared is a chemical. It's a it's a process that accelerates the chemical. Okay. Uh, it's not heat that cures it. Oh, it's just heat, the reaction. Heat actually works against resin. Resin, when you heat resin up, will soften. But the chemical process of a thermoset uh, resin 
uh, is what the infrared does. So the infrared is uh, is, is um, naturally the byproduct of the infrared is heat. That's impressive. Huh? in a little longer. Bit more baking. Oh, it's, it's a big area. A few moments later. So now back out of uh, the curing booth. Um, this bike is ready to ride but we don't want to ride it like this because the material is too thick. There's too much material in here. So what we're going to do now is profile this. And there's a certain technique takes years to get right and what we're trying to achieve is wall thickness. Wall thickness cannot be compromised. This is the area where uh, novices will uh, maybe damage radiuses and they'll make compromise when they can't see it because they can't tell how thick the wall is. See, there's more. There's more involved in pre preparation. So yeah. we would we would use different grits to get through it. But what you hit with a hammer is is now no more. So if you want to squeeze away. Jeez. Rock solid. Yeah. And more importantly, this is the same wall thickness now yeah. as it is there. And we got rid of all the delamination that was around in that area from the hammer blow, which was on this side. A huge, huge, huge thanks to Rob at Carbon Bike Repair UK for showing this whole process and supporting the channel. It is much appreciated. Now check out the link to Carbon Bike Repair UK in the description it will be the first link the next video in this series will be building the bike so do subscribe so you don't miss that it is going to be interesting you may also be interested in this video where rob talks all things carbon fiber frames lots of insightful information